We're going to start by taking a quick look at the CircuitWorks user interface. This is CircuitWorks for SolidWorks, but CircuitWorks Standalone and the CircuitWorks Viewer have exactly the same user interface, so this example counts for all three products. In this case we're showing a seat of CircuitWorks with no files open. You can see there's various menus and toolbars, all of which can be moved around and docked like so. I'll start by opening a typical IDF file. So we do that by browsing using either the open ECAD file icon here or going to file open and selecting a suitable IDF 2, 3, 4 or pads file. In this case I'm going to open this example here, cell phone. This is an IDF 3 file. Click the open button. OK, and this shows the data displayed in CircuitWorks. You can see the information inside this IDF file is shown in two ways. On the right hand side it's shown as a preview image and on the left hand side the data is represented by this tree view. To look at the preview image first, the preview image is controlled by this toolbar here. This is the view toolbar and also by a corresponding view menu. So for example we can use the view toolbar to zoom into a particular area, to take a closer look at it, to zoom to the extents, look at the back of the board, look at the front of the board, and generally move around and take a look at a visual representation of the data inside the IDF or PADS file. As well as zooming in and manipulating the image, we can also toggle things on and off. In this case, the components are shown in the dark blue color, so I can select this icon here and toggle off the display of the components, or toggle them back on. In a similar way, I could use the view, to view toolbar, for example, to toggle off the display of the plated holes. Those are the tiny holes with electrical plating on that are used for the components. So again, I can turn those back on, either from the toolbar, or I can use the corresponding menu here. It's up to the user which, which, which is used. So that's basically the preview image. On the left-hand side, the tree view can also be used to interact with the data and to interact with the preview image. If we take a quick look, the tree view gives us a, a quick overview at a glance of the information that's stored inside the IDF file. So we can see here we've got one board, 13 non-plated holes, 99 plated holes. And I can expand these nodes out so I can actually see a node that represents an individual hole. And I can actually select it here and you can see the corresponding hole highlights in the preview. So I can select something in the tree view image and see it highlighted and located in the preview image. The same applies for components. You can see there's 81 components of which there are many hundreds of instances in this, uh, in this example. So if I select a component, for example this component here, 0404R, you can see the three instances of that component, which I can expand out underneath, R254, 256 and R250. They correspondingly highlight in the preview image on the right hand side. So we can zoom in, take a closer look at those three, and there they are. So the tree view image and the preview together can be used to interact with the data. There's a couple of other icons that are worth explaining here. You'll see some of these components here are marked with a, a little star symbol, and some like this component here aren't. This is for circuit works with solid works, and it, it's a quick way of visually indicating to the user whether a component already exists in circuit works component library or not, so whether it has a solid works model. So in this case, 0402C isn't marked with a little star. What that means is CircuitWorks has a SolidWorks component model. In this case, it doesn't have a SolidWorks component model. Again, that only applies to the CircuitWorks or SolidWorks product rather than the, the standalone product. There's a few other points to notice. In the tree here, this component buzzer is marked with an exclamation mark. And if I highlight it, you can see there's the component there on the right hand side. Now, the exclamation mark and the use of wireframe indicate that that component has zero height. There's no physical height associated with that component. It's basically just a 2D outline. So if I were to, in this case, in CircuitWorks or SolidWorks, build a 2D, uh, build a, a, a solid model in SolidWorks of this board and its components, this component would come through with no height. That's what the wireframe representation, rather than the solid representation, and the exclamation mark tell us. If I just compress up the components, you'll see in the in the view on the left hand side in the tree view we've got a couple of other things. A component keep out area, that's this area here, again highlighted in red, which indicates an area that uh, components aren't allowed to uh, occupy. 
again these areas if you're using SOLIDWORKS for uh, CircuitWorks if you're using CircuitWorks for SOLIDWORKS sorry these areas can uh, all be shown in the uh, SOLIDWORKS product finally annotations you can see there are three annotations uh, these are the notes which are also shown in the tree view now the tree view can also be used to edit the properties of the various entities in the IDF file and that's what we'll be looking at next.